Thelonious Sphere Monk. Uh, he was born two years after his sister Marion on October 10th, 1917, in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, and he was the son of also Thelonious and Barbara Monk. After the addition of his brother Thomas, in 1920 his family moved to Manhattan, New York. Monk married Nellie Smith in 1947, and in 1949 the couple had a son named T.S. Monk, also called Toot, or Toot rather, who became a jazz drummer. A daughter, they also had a daughter, Barbara, uh, who was known as Boo Boo. Uh, she was born in 1953 and ended up dying of cancer in 1984. Thelonious had uh, no direct influences, I guess, with well, his only direct influence was a man, uh, Willie Smith, who basically made something of the stride pa piano tradition, and Bologna uh, is built on that. Uh, obviously, being a stride pianist could be considered. Well, he had obviously different styles through his career, but <clears throat> it would be safe to say that Coleman Hawkins, uh, the first well-known musician that, that Monk made studio recordings with in the Coleman Hawkins Quartet uh, is definitely one of his influences. Um, you know, at, at the beginning of anybody's career, they look to someone who can guide them, and it looks like Coleman Hawkins Quartet was, you know, a band and that he was a part of, and a record label as well. Uh, Monk is one of five jazz musicians that have been featured on the cover of Time magazine after Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong. Dave Brubeck and Duke Ellington, and they these three artists have different styles than Thelonious Monk for sure. But um, Time Magazine is obviously very acclaimed and, and renowned, and I it's fair to assume that Thelonious used these artists as inspirations for who he was as a, mu as a musician rather than his type of music. <coughs> uh, as for education. Um, he started playing piano at six years old, and the only education he had once he moved to New York with his family was at a high school called Stoy Vesson High School, I think that's how it's said, uh, which today is one of the most selective high schools for gifted students in all of New York, and it was just as such back then. <clears throat> there he played piano. Um, he didn't graduate, but, you know, based on what he's accomplished, it's safe to say that he's definitely learned a lot and gained a lot from, from going to that school. Um, obviously, he plays the piano. <coughs> As for bands he played in, <coughs> he mostly played for record labels. Um, he was an active musician from 1944 to 1973, and in 1944, Monk made his first studio recordings with the Coleman Hawkins Quartet, and but beyond this, um, Thelonious, for the most part, played as himself, as Thelonious. Um, he had difficulty making a living as a jazz artist, um, and he also struggled with getting local gigs in New York. This was because he got in some legal trouble where he was um, in a car with, with another musician, and he got caught with something he shouldn't have had at the time. It's not really important, but what happened is they took away... Um, Basically, the card that allowed him to play at New York uh, liquor bars, and, and I say liquor bars, but basically bars that served liquor, um, so he wasn't allowed to play there anymore. They revoked that card. Uh, from this, he he didn't get to play, and, and basically where he lived in, uh, from when he was young. and So what he would do is he bounced around from label to label, um, playing with anybody really who would pay him, <clears throat> getting signed to as cheap as a hundred four dollars, so, which today is equivalent to less than four, less than fifteen hundred dollars, which is uh, extraordinarily cheap. He played album by album as well, um, due to his desirable piano skills. He was uh, mostly a composer, but he was in feature a couple, a handful of feature tracks. Where they used him for his piano skills and. and and I say album by album, I mean basically the record labels. He would make an album or two with them and then move on based on success or money or, or what have you. 
The record labels he played with include um, Blue Note Records, Prestige Records, Savoy Records, uh, Riverside Records, Columbia Records, and he finished his career playing with uh, Black Lion Label, which was a label in England. Uh, an English label, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure they were stationed, I guess, in England. Uh, throughout his time as a pianist, he played with some notable members, <coughs> including Miles Davis, towards the end of his career, uh, John Coltrane, and Dizzy Gillespie. As for his style, Polonius had a, obviously, like most renowned musicians and skilled musicians, he had a very unique style. He had um, unorthodox improvisations, and those, along with his compositions, feature dissonances and angular melodic twists. This was consistent with, with his original approach to the piano, which combined a highly percussive attack with abrupt, dramatic use of switched key releases, silences, and hesitations. As a performer, he was also known for just getting up, dancing, and uh, enjoying himself from the piano uh, while other musicians played their parts, or when his, and also when his part wasn't uh, relevant. Um, some examples. So it's first, firstly, the note, Monk is the second most recorded jazz composer of all time, second to Duke Ellington, which is per pretty remarkable as Ellington composed almost 2,000 pieces, whereas Monk wrote about 70. So for the time period that Thelonious played in, um, first of all, it's important to note that he played in a, a handful of eras, basically. He, he was an active musician from 1944 to 1973, so obviously he played in the 40s, the 50s, 60s, and a little bit in the early 70s. Um, they're all their own interesting time periods by themselves, so, but uh, he created and recorded most of his com compositions and was on feature tracks in the late 40s and throughout the 50s. So, um, like Straight No Chaser, Bench of Swing, and Blue Monk. So, uh, for the 50s, the 1950s, I'll elaborate on that. Uh, America was healing from the effects of World War II at the time. Um, obviously, there was um, a lot of devastation, a lot of people lost, a lot of um, discomfort in the people, I guess you could say. And, and the country was also embroiled in another conflict against North Korea. North Korea and Southeast Asia, which lasted until about the mid 1950s, which um, kept people on the edge of their seats as well. So what this did is, is there was a lot of tension, but it also created a space in American culture for something to ease this tension. And the thing that filled up that space was music, uh, thusly jazz. And after jazz took its place, it, it you know it it already had caught fire, but it. It definitely was played a more intrinsic role to the people and in the music industry um, there was a 45 rpm record that was called the single and a 78 rpm record which uh, was played on a, the horn phonograph at the same time there was a the 10 inch and the 12 inch long playing records at 33 and one third rpms that came along uh, and became the industry standard at this time uh, and this is what is interesting. This is, this is when jazz could sh musicians could stretch out their music rather than Duke Ellington having, you know, hundreds of of um, tracks, that, soundtracks, and, and recordings that are just three minutes long. <clears throat> they were no longer hindered by that. They could have, you know, longer recordings. And television's uh, popularity was also growing. Uh, by the time, by the end of the decade, and it had overtaken radio. Um, not completely, obviously. There's still radio today, but and it became the single most important entertainment medium. Uh, jazz benefited from this medium, uh, as musicians were occasionally featured on variety programs and specials. And I have a quote from a, a website: but "Great musicians who stretched the limits of the music in the 1940s, alto saxophonist Charlie Parker, trumpeters Dilly Gill." Dizzy Gillespie and Miles Davis, pianist Bud Powell and Thelonious Monk and others continued to be at the forefront for the 50s. And um, that basically um, states the, the popularity that Thelonious Monk had in the 50s. And that's Thelonious Fear Monk.